everyone. Welcome back to Science. I'm Miss Catherine, and I'm really glad that you decided to join me again today. Today, we're going to continue in our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems unit with Lesson 1.2. And this lesson is called Carbon Dioxide in Ecosystems. What you will need today, as usual, is a pen or a pencil and some blank or lined paper um, so that you can follow along and record your ideas. If you have access to Amplify Online, that would be great, um, but it's not required. And we are going to be doing a reading today called A Feast for Decomposers. So if your school or your school district provided a printed copy of the article set, A Feast for Decomposers, uh, make sure you have that handy and within reach. Otherwise, you can follow along with me on my screen as I read when we get to that part today. And then lastly, friend or family member is always encouraged so you can share your ideas about what it is we are for and um, if you're following along, again, on Amplify, there is your click path to get to our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems, Chapter 2, Lesson 2.1. And on your paper, here is how I would like you to have that set up. Go ahead and pause the video so you can get these things done and ready for today. As we start today, um, we're going to do the warm up, which is Activity 1, if you're following along in Amplify. And this warm is reminding us that at the end of the last lesson, we figured out that there wasn't enough carbon dioxide in the biodome's air, which caused a decrease in the energy storage molecules inside the biodome because the producers are those plants that uh, create the energy storage molecules from the carbon dioxide in the air, along with water and sunlight, didn't have enough of this abiotic carbon from the carbon dioxide to turn into these energy storage molecules. Um, so at this time, go ahead and pause the video and either in Amplify in Activity 1 or on your paper, let's go ahead and answer this question. What are some ideas you have about what might have caused the decrease in carbon dioxide? One thing that makes sense to me about this question is, well, if I want to know what caused the decrease in carbon dioxide, maybe I need to think about where the carbon dioxide comes from. And I know that as a human, when I breathe out, I breathe out part of carbon dioxide in that, in that air that I'm exhaling. And so maybe there's some connection there between um, the people or the other animals that breathe out carbon dioxide as why there maybe wasn't enough in the atmosphere, in the air of the biodome. So again, last chapter, we realized that there wasn't enough carbon dioxide in the air, and so therefore those producers didn't have enough carbon available to them to make our energy storage molecules. And therefore our plants and our animals didn't have the energy that they needed to survive. Um, so now in chapter two, we're gonna think about the cause of that. So what caused carbon dioxide to decrease in the air? of the biodome. So what was causing this decrease of abiotic carbon matter within the biodome? Since we now know that this decrease of carbon dioxide is the culprit or is the cause of why our producers did not make enough energy storage molecules. So we're gonna get down um, today to start some initial ideas about where we believe carbon dioxide um, can be found. Because again, if I'm going to say why the carbon dioxide decreased, I need to think about where it comes from in the first place. That's a logical connection, okay? Um, so we're gonna move into activity two now in Amplify if you're following along. And it's a sorting tool activity. Um, so when you're ready, you're gonna go ahead and pause this video and use the carbon dioxide in ecosystem sorting tool, or on your paper, create your own two column chart that looks like this to show your ideas about which parts of an ecosystem do and do not give off carbon dioxide. And you have some options here. So one column says gives off carbon dioxide, one column says does not give off carbon dioxide. And you're gonna list out of these options which column you believe they are a part of. So we have soil bacteria, we have fallen leaves, mushrooms, um, a plant, a snail, and a snake. And this is, if you're in Amplify, 
going to go to activity two. This is what it will look like. So again, when you're ready, pause the video and go ahead and sort these components into our two column table of which ones you think give off carbon dioxide and which ones you think do not. I don't know about you, but in the sorting tool, I was pretty certain that the animal, like the snail, um, gives off carbon dioxide, um, but I wasn't really sure about the plant or the decomposers, um, the mushrooms, for example, or, or the dead stuff, like the dead leaves. Um, and I, I know that plants can take in carbon dioxide um, and produce energy storage molecules through that process of photosynthesis, um, but I'm not entirely sure if they um, give off carbon dioxide or not. Um, so as we investigate this question, where does the carbon dioxide and abiotic matter come from, we need um, a little bit more uh, data to analyze to be sure my hunch on animals giving out carbon dioxide from things that I know and to really help me decide whether plants give off carbon dioxide um, or not, or just take it in, okay? So we're gonna watch um, a video of an experiment with a snail, which is an animal, and an elodia uh, plant, it's an aquatic plant, and we're gonna watch this video of someone conducting an experiment to see if uh, the snail and the elodia do in fact give off carbon dioxide or not. Um, and as we watch the video, there's gonna be two parts. I want you to ask yourself these three questions, record them on your paper or talk with them, um, with that family member or friend on video chat that you have nearby. Um, so we're gonna think about do producers like the elodia give off or take in carbon dioxide and how we know that from the experiment. And then do consumers like the snail give off or take in carbon dioxide and how do we know that? Remember consumer again is an organism that needs to eat other organisms to get those energy storage molecules. They don't produce them like a producer does. And then lastly, what do these answers mean about where the carbon dioxide in abiotic matter comes from? As that's what we're trying to investigate here in lesson 2.1, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up those videos. Um, so here's the first one. Last time we saw that plants use carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. But where does the carbon dioxide in an ecosystem come from? In this experiment, we see whether producers or consumers give off carbon dioxide. In the box, we have a producer, the water plant called Elodia, and a consumer, the snail. First, we start with three vials, each containing water and a chemical that tells us how much carbon dioxide is in the vials. The chemical's color will change according to the amount of carbon dioxide. Yellow means that there's a high level of carbon dioxide. Green means that there's a low level. And blue means that there is no carbon dioxide. Right now, the vials have no carbon dioxide because we want to test which organisms give off carbon dioxide. Next, we'll add an elodia plant to vial B and a freshwater snail to vial C. Vial A, with no organism, will be the control group. Finally, we wrap all three vials in foil. We don't want light to interfere with our results since we know that plants perform photosynthesis and take in carbon dioxide from the environment in the light. We're gonna check back with the vials after 12 hours. What do you think will happen to the carbon dioxide levels? All right, so what do you think will happen? Remember that in this experiment, we're using a uh, solution, an indicator, that's going to change color if there is carbon dioxide present. So as you saw at the beginning, each of the vials were blue, indicating there was no carbon dioxide. And so what we're gonna look for after 12 hours is a color change. Is it green, meaning there's a little bit of carbon dioxide, or yellow, meaning there's a high level of carbon dioxide. So if we see a color change, that means there is carbon dioxide present, and those 
um, objects, the snail or the elodia produced that carbon dioxide. And if we don't see a color change, then that means that there wasn't any carbon dioxide produced. So make a prediction, what do you think will happen? And I'm gonna go ahead and get up here next, a video of our results. So let's unwrap the vials to see what happened. It looks like vial A, the control, is unchanged, which we expected. Vial B and C, the plant and the snail, have changed color. First they were blue, and now they're yellow. This means that both producers and consumers give off carbon dioxide. Wow, I was surprised by that, were you? So we just figured out from the snail and the Elonia experiment that both animals and plants give off carbon dioxide um, to the abiotic matter in an ecosystem. And again, I don't know about you, but that was a little bit surprising to me about the Elodia, about the plants because I knew they took in the carbon dioxide, but I didn't realize that they also released the carbon dioxide into the air or the water or those other abiotic matter sources within an ecosystem. So I'm gonna ask that if you were surprised um, by that like I was, that you pause the video and use this time um, to make any needed changes to show which parts of the ecosystem do and do not give off carbon dioxide. So if you had Elodia over here is, does not give off carbon dioxide, go ahead and pause the video and change that and move that over um, as it does in fact give off carbon dioxide as our snail and our Elodia experiment showed us. So now we're gonna figure out what to do with those decomposers. And we're going to turn to an article set called A Feast for Decomposers to help us do that. Um, so if you have access to the article set, um, you can pause the video at this time, and I want you to just read the introduction. And as you read, you're gonna look for information that might help you figure out the investigation question, and if decomposers do give off carbon dioxide to the abiotic matter in the air or the water. If you don't have access to the article set, um, you can follow along with me right now as I just read the introduction, again, considering our investigation question here of do decomposers like consumers and producers give off carbon dioxide? So I'm gonna go to my article and this is found here in activity four, if you're following along Amplify Online. And we're just gonna read the introduction. So imagine you're invited to a feast. When you get there, your host serves you droppings, dry brown leaves, bare bones, feathers, and a fallen tree. But you can't eat that. This is a feast for decomposers, not humans. Decomposers are fungi, bacteria, worms, and other small organisms that specialize in breaking down dead matter. I'm gonna underline or highlight here that last sentence um, because that's giving me that definition of what a decomposer is. It's things like fungi, bacteria, worms, other small organisms that specialize in breaking down dead matter. Decomposers can break down things that nothing else can. Bones, droppings, and other dead matter may not seem like food, but they contain materials that decomposers use for energy and growth. For example, dead matter contains energy storage molecules that many decomposers use for cellular respiration. I'm gonna highlight that. As I don't know if I realized that dead stuff also contains energy storage molecules. Cellular respiration is a process that many organisms, including humans, use to release energy in order to survive. During cellular respiration, oxygen and energy storage molecules combine, releasing energy and giving off carbon dioxide. Energy storage molecules contain carbon, an important component of living things. Through cellular respiration, Decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available to the ecosystem. Oh, that's important. 
Through cellular respiration, decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available to the ecosystem. So that means decomposers release carbon. That's what I've been trying to um, figure out here. De Without decomposers, this carbon would stay trapped in the dead matter. Decomposers don't just release carbon from dead matter, they also make other materials available to an ecosystem, such as nitrogen. Nitrogen is a critical component for plant growth. Decomposers may be small, but they play an important role in an ecosystem. To learn more about decomposers, read one or more of the chapters that follow. Um, you may do that if you like, but we're going to stop here um, because this sentence kind of tells us exactly what we needed to know. Decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available through this process of cellular respiration. So that means decomposers do, in fact, release carbon. And that means that carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter also can come from decomposers. So again, if you need to make a change to your chart from earlier, go ahead and do that. And I'm not sure. All right, there we go. So pause the video to make any needed changes to show that actually all of these parts of an ecosystem do give off carbon dioxide. The producers, the consumers, and the decomposers alike. So as we reflect on lesson 2.1 today, before next time, share the evidence that you gathered today and your ideas about where carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter of ecosystems come from. And if you want to know more about decomposers, um, go ahead and complete activity five and amplify online. That's gonna have you look at that article set a little bit uh, further. I'll see you next time.